All right, y'all, so Capture One Pro 12 is now out. And we now have Fuji film simulations, um, like every single one of them, and they look gorgeous. Um, but on top of that, there's some new tools uh, in Capture One Pro 12 that uh, were like much needed. And I'm gonna show you the number one like favorite one of mine. Um, number one favorite. Did that? You guys understood what that meant? Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into this. Alright y'all, so when it comes to Fuji files, we all know how good the skin tones are. Um, on top of that, when I use the skin tone tool in Capture One, um, I like to bring up the lightness just to kind of make the skin a little more flat and even. So when I do go into retouch, um, it makes it even easier. So I'll just show you. That's without it and that's with it. So you see it just kind of mats out the skin a little bit more. Granted, this model has amazing skin in person and the light I shot it in was like pretty much perfect to what I like. So that's a big help. Like you're not gonna be able to work any miracles um, off the bat like that unless you're shooting it in really good light. So try to get it as close as you can in camera. Um, just be careful what kind of light you're shooting in and everything. Um, so yeah, again, let me show you. That's without the lightness. This is with it turned all the way up. And you see how flat and good the skin looks, but it just doesn't look real. Um, and again, that's uh, also because of Fuji skin tones. They're like so good. They're, they're too good. Because when you start editing them like that, you lose contrast. So the new tool that Capture One has is the Luma range. So I'll just turn this on. It's a very subtle, but if you look on her forehead, there's a little more contrast up there now. If you look right here at the tip of her nose, around here, and at her chin, and a little bit over here, turn it off again, you see a little pop of contrast on her neck too around here. So when you look at film, uh, film just holds skin tones beautifully, and one of the characteristics is in the highlights, there's a lot of ambient color up there, so it's not just flat. That's one thing that people miss when they do retouching. They think in order to add contrast, you have to uh, bring up the like the highlights, but I don't do that. Basically, I mean, I do it a little bit, but mostly what it is is I'm desaturating it, and then I'm also throwing in some color. Color that would naturally contrast against her skin tone, which would be orange. So what stops of orange is green. Um, well, like a blue, bluish green, whatever. So as you can see, uh, for this Luma range, and I'll show you how to set it up in a second, uh, my brightness is barely pushed up, but I desaturate it a lot. So another thing you can do, again, is you can go in and you can throw in some extra color. Uh, I'll just show you what that will look like. Um, let's see. It down obviously so you you see it just adds more contrast but um, with just the saturation dip down it bounces out enough to these highlights in her hair and the sky so how you set this up is you click on the plus sign do new field layer um, I want to see the effect that's happening as I'm doing it so I'm just gonna click down on the desaturation I'm gonna go to my luma range up here it's right up here and let's do display mask and I'm just gonna slide this over. And you can see what range it's starting to affect. So I use this for a lot of things. Um, like say, let's cancel all this real quick. Say, well actually here, let, let me do the range first and then we'll start playing with it. So yeah, um, do display mask again. See what areas it's affecting. The radius just affects um, basically the edge blur on it and the sensitivity obviously is affecting uh, how much it's going to affect. So if you look over here to the blue, you can see the lines get a little more harsher. And if you go over here, they get a little more sensitive, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna bump my radius up more. So I want it to be very soft and natural looking. So this one right here is basically the softness between the transition. So you see if I cut this down right here, the transition between the effect is gonna be harsher. And then this, it kind of smooths it out over 
the darker and brighter parts. The best thing to do is just to go in and play with it yourself and figure out what knob does what and what's affecting what. This is getting too much there, so. There, all right, let's apply that. So now this layer basically has a mask on it and you can see what it's doing. So it's taking the highlights of her skin and it's just taking some color out of it to put some contrast back in there. So you can, you don't have to use it just for that. There's so many different things you can do to it. Um, say you're over in your color balance tool and the highlight area is affecting too much. Well, you can go in and you can create a mask. Uh, say if you just want the shadows in there and watch, we'll do a, a new mask. So let's just do a new filled layer. So you're in your shadows and you want just your shadows to be, let's make them like a red, like a vintagey red. But you don't want it to affect the skin tones at all or any of that. Go up to your luma range and you can dip down the highlights. And you see it's starting to just affect the shadows now. So we've been doing this in Photoshop for forever now. Like it's such a strong tool. You can go through and you can mask just a color and just zap that. Again, in Capture One, you can do pretty much everything now. Um, the only thing that I do in, in Photoshop now is retouching through um, a frequency separation. So if Capture One ever comes out with a frequency separation tool, then I most likely will rarely have to go into Photoshop. But yeah, we can just kind of some TV on that, click apply. So yeah, now you have effect that's only affecting your shadows. So you see, you can push the shadows all the way up, get a cool vintage look, do whatever you want with it. So yeah, guys, that's my new favorite tool in Capture One. Um, again, I still have to open the file up to retouch it in Photoshop, but getting all that done, it just kills like five more steps I had to do in Photoshop. Uh, it just makes it way easier. And also with that, I can copy and paste that effect and it just does it across the board. So again, that's less retouching time overall. Uh, but yeah, guys, if you have any questions uh, or you just want to talk and I don't know, talk gear or whatever, I don't know. Uh, you could leave a comment on here or obviously hit me up on my Instagram, whatever works. Um, I'll be putting more videos out on Capture One. That's like my number one request is how I do my color grading and all that. So I'm also going to be doing more film work this year. For sure, I'm already getting way more inquiries just in the past week of the new year. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. Peace.